All right, hello and welcome. My name is Nicolina Bolins. I am the manager of the third edition Best Practices in Diversity and Inclusion Conference. Um, just to start off, I'll go ahead and give you a, a very brief background about the event. Um, it is being held September 15th through 17th, 2020 in Washington, D.C. and virtually as well. Um, it's going to bring together senior level diversity and inclusion professionals um, from cross industries and Fortune 1000 companies. Uh, we're going to talk about some key topics like metrics, intersectionality, the current COVID-19 environment, and of course the topic that Jill is going to be discussing um, today and at the event. So don't want to steal the spotlight from her. Um, so today with me I have Jill Littlejohn, who is the Director of Inclusion and Diversity at Hubble Incorporated. Um, in case you're not familiar with Hubble Incorporated, it's an international manufacturer of electrical and electronic products. Um, before this role, Jill has had a you know, pretty extensive and, and diverse background, um, including being the first female uh, president and CEO of the um, Urban League at the, of the Upstate. Um, so, with that, you know, thank you so much, Jill, for, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and, and jump right into the um, question. So you're going to be moderating a panel discussion on global diversity and inclusion. Um, do you mind just start kind of starting off the conversation, um, you know, talking a little bit about what you're going to discuss? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to have a, a topic on global diversity and inclusion, which is even more timely now, right? Because um, not only is this conversation for companies that have international locations, but now the world is closer than what we thought. So now with so many people doing things virtually, whereas you couldn't have done some of your work um Globally, a lot of companies will have that opportunity to do that. Um, so we're going to just kind of do some best practices around some of the, the companies, um, what they're doing around global diversity and inclusion, some of the challenges, some of the barriers, as well as some of the best practices that we can share with our attendees. Yeah, great. Um, so you kind of just alluded to it, and that's, you know, obviously the, the current environment right now and, and everything that's happening with COVID-19. Um, so how are, you know, you and in, in your organization, you know, adapting to this environment from a diversity and inclusion standpoint? So I think one of the biggest things to remember is that, you know, um, whenever there is a crisis, sometimes uh, we tend to take the focus off of diversity and inclusion. And now more than ever, people want to be included. They want to have an inclusive environment and inclusive culture. And so we've had to, you know, adapt a number of things in terms of, you know, everybody's working from home now. And um, it, it also, what we found from some of our global colleagues in general is that now they feel more included, right? Now, everybody's virtual. Everybody's talking from what we like to all call our home offices. And so, you know, we've adjusted to that, um, in one way, but also looking at other tools that we can use to show and make all of our employees feel included. Not only is flexibility important, but also um, in terms of, you know, what resources do we have? And so we have a, a great partner that we're able to offer resiliency tools to our employees. Um, which a lot of people don't think about that as a banner of inclusion. And so what we found is that people are extremely um, grateful and appreciative of that, as well as being extremely um, transparent, more transparent than I think we have been in the past. And so things are changing daily. And, you know, our, our leadership team were saying, hey, here's the information as of today. <laughs> so, you know, it, it could change tomorrow and we're gonna communicate that um, as it goes along, but people are really appreciating that. Yeah, and you know, you just mentioned that, um, you know, it's a, it's obviously a global issue and everybody is kind of impacted by, you know, COVID-19, it's just not just the United States. So I guess, you know, Aside from um, you know the current environment right now, um, what are some of the other challenges that um, come with you know making sure you know diversity and inclusion across you know a diverse workforce or a diverse customer base? Absolutely. So if you think about it from uh, terms of 
baseline. Most companies um, and organizations enter um, from their home base, which typically it would be the U.S. For us, you know, we have locations in Mexico, Brazil, China, um, you know, and then other sales sites um, all across um, all across the world. And so, whereas some of the topics that we focus on from a workforce base in the U.S. are not going to be the same that you would focus on in Mexico or in Brazil or in China. And so you really have to put a broader lens on how you're looking at inclusion and diversity. You have to think beyond some of the common challenges that we have from a workforce perspective and really dig into the cultures where your employees are listed. From a customer base, you know, you have to really learn the cultures of your customers. And so I, I can think back at a time when I, I, I did some extensive travel um, one period in Japan, another period in China, and we had to learn all of the business etiquette for those two particular countries. And they were completely different from here in the U.S. Yeah. In terms, there was one particular practice that always just kind of got to me and I had to practice it. And, and then it became, it came different when I came back to the U.S. because there was a culture where you, when you get a business card, you have to look at the card and you look at it and you admire it and kind of pause. And then you, you talk about it. And then you accept the card. And so when I came back to the U.S., I started doing that. And people were like, what are you, why are you standing up? It's just a business card. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, but again, you have to be able to be adaptable and adapt to those countries um, where you either have talent or a customer base. Yeah. So you already kind of answered part of my, my next question. And that was really, you know, how diversity and inclusion might look differently, you know, based on different 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 cultures and geographic regions. But, you know, when you think of the terms diversity and inclusion, you know, how do you personally evaluate and define them? So um, there's a, a, a kind of a definition that's been uh, floating around for a while, and, and it's still one of my favorite ones, even um, after a number of years. And, you know, it's uh, uh, diversity is who's at the party and inclusion is um, everybody's dancing. I take it a bit further. I say diversity is who's at the party. Inclusion is everyone who is at the party is dancing if they want to, because inclusion is a choice. And so you have an option. And then I always take it a, an additional step and say equity is, are they playing my song? So you can be at a party, you can be dancing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the song that you want to hear. So um, it's really important to make sure that all of the elements are um, working together. And so that's what diversity and inclusion means to me. And so even with my title, my title is Director of Inclusion and Diversity, and that was on purpose, is because we wanted to make sure that we had an inclusive culture that supported the diverse workforce and talent that we were bringing in. Because you can bring in the people, you can hit the numbers, you can meet the quota, but if that culture does not support those individuals that you're bringing in, then you'll constantly stay in a cycle of um, trying to fill the numbers. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, going into making everybody, you know, obviously feel included, um, you know, and you also alluded to this, you know, several times throughout our conversation so far, and that's obviously adapting, you know, different, um, you know, strategies and practices based on the audience and, and the culture that you might be working with. So, you know, what are some strategies that you've maybe implemented to be able to adapt to different cultures and environments? So one thing that's really important, especially when you're dealing with a global workforce, is that, you know, we provide within our learning management system, we have some different trainings available to um, our workforce to be able to learn about the different cultures where you may a, have uh, colleagues or be, be doing business so that you can have a general understanding of what you're going into, because we can't expect individuals to be prepared without giving them the tools and resources that they need to be prepared. And so, you know, that's been one of the things that's really been um, helpful um, and um, allows us to grow. Now, we still have a lot of growing to do, right? Nobody gets it perfect. Um, we're all learning and growing uh, day by day. And I think also sharing best practices with our colleagues. Um, you know, I, I am fortunate to be a part of a, um, you know, Chief Diversity Officers Roundtable where we get an opportunity to just kind of share hey, this is what's working. This is what's not working. You know, people say, hey, I'm trying this. And somebody else can say, hey, I tried that. It didn't work for me. Maybe it'll work for you. And it gives us an opportunity to have a safe space and a safe place to really discuss ideas and techniques. 
Yeah, so you've been great with the segues. Um, you know, my, my last question was going to be, you know, what you were um, you know, most looking forward to and, and excited about the event. So I guess obviously, you know, sharing best practices with your colleagues is going to be up there. But I guess, you know, if you had to say something else, you know, what else are you really excited for? I mean, I don't want you to downplay it, right? Because that's a really big thing <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> Because most of us that are in this role, you know, depending on the size of your company, you're either a team of one or a smaller mm -hmm. team. And so you're talking to the same people um, and sometimes not having anyone to talk to. So just having a conference that allows you to network, build connections, um, learn, you know, I'm really excited about all the, I, I mean, I love the panel that I'm doing, but I've looked at some of the other sections and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I want to make sure that nothing kind of interferes with the other topic because there's so many great subjects. So I am looking forward to being able to take all of the information in, go back and look at my strategy and say, hey, I've learned this, maybe I can adapt this, or I wasn't even thinking about this particular technique or um, item. And so now I want to add that to my plan. Yeah, well, we're excited as well. Uh, so, you know, we're looking forward to a great event and, and having your participation. Um, and, you know, this has been great. This has, you know, all been been very helpful and excited and made us even more excited for the event. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview and to participate in the event. And we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And I hope people aren't, um, you know, scared away because it's something virtual. Again, we've all been living virtual now for months. And so this is an opportunity to even uh, reinforce that and continue to grow and to learn together. Yeah, definitely.